What is cooking good lookings? This video does not fall under my Sunday weekly series videos and I know last Sunday I did not post a video. I apologize. Uh, everything that's been happening has just really taken a toll on me and I needed a break. I actually could not get anything done but you know um, it's part of that up and down cycle. But um, this video is going to address the elephant in the world currently, not just in the room, Black Lives Matter. Um, I, as a light-skinned individual under the US Census, classifies as white. So therefore, I cannot speak to you on behalf of individuals who are affected by racism, by um, prejudice, by fear for their life on the daily um simply because of their skin color i will be addressing um the importance of taking part of the black labs movement and why there is quite a bit of racism that is found in a lot of mina homes which is middle eastern north um, african homes um, and how that is truly just cultivated by um, a system who uses a hierarchical system to oppress and to help oppressors oppress. Um, it, it's interesting, but that's going to be what I'm going to speak about because I've experienced this. I've, built, I've lived this. Um, but then also with the help of a few of my friends, I will be sharing their videos, their thoughts and their words and um, how they feel about this movement and um, how they feel about everything that's happening. So I have a friend from Brazil, Texas, South Africa. Um, and additionally, in the description box, I will be including a bunch of links to videos, donation um, sites, articles to read, movies to watch, books to read, and a bunch of additional information that you can use to either educate yourself if you are like me and don't quite understand the severity of the discrimination experienced by the black community or if you would like to help out or both. So if you are of Middle Eastern or North African descent, according to the US census and according to the rest of the world, um, and by the rest of the world I truly mean um, any first world country, um, so all of the European nations and countries uh, as well as America of course, uh, we are considered white. They, the U.S. Census released this year actually um, now writes white in parentheses, Middle Eastern or North African. I used to not. Um, and growing up in the U.S., I had a really hard time um, filling out just a checkbox, you know, because I don't personally identify as white. I'm not white. I am full-blooded Egyptian. I was born and partly raised in Egypt. I am not white. I am not American. I am American by a passport and a piece of paper. However, it's not my blood. It's not my genetics. So why? Why are they clumping us with the white? Rather, um, when we actually don't identify as such. Um, several reasons. First, we are what they considered a model minority. By grouping us under the white, we statistically fall and statistically impact the white sect of the nation. So all of the hard work we do, the degrees we earn, the diplomas, the jobs, the money we make, everything goes to aid the numbers that make white people look more successful. However, you and I both know, or at least I'd hope you know, and if you don't hear, I am to tell you that by your name, the first thing that an employer sees or the first thing that a uh, school sees or whatever, um, you are obviously going to be subject to off the bat discrimination. Does not matter your skin color? If your name is Egyptian, like mine, my last name is Gerges, everybody looks at it and it's obvious I'm not white. Nine times out of 10, 
even if it's very subtle and even if people won't admit it, there is still prejudice. There is still racism because of your name. Bear in mind those who have very um, Muslim related names. So like Muhammad, Ahmed, um, if that's part of your name, you're automatically subject to even a higher amount of racism because, huh, hello, welcome to uneducated people an implicit bias that's raised and literally rooted in Americans from birth that the second they see this name, they associate it with Islam, which is true, but again, that shouldn't matter. But the second a lot of them hear Islam, they'll associate it with very racist and prejudiced thoughts such as, oh, he's Muslim, he's probably a terrorist, or she's probably this. Or if they see a picture of you in a hijab, or if they see you wearing this or that, or a traditional clothes, you're automatically set apart. So really, even though we are white and we get the white privilege, we are discriminated against. So this Black Lives Movement, while we are not impacted and we have not been slaves and we have not had this rough, disgusting history that our black brothers and sisters have, we are still subject to this. And if you have heard in your household, oh, they're black or oh, they're this, and you've heard your parents be prejudiced against individuals of color, that's not your color or that's not your race, that is because they come in and they are placed as white, therefore, creating a psychological hierarchy, making them believe that they are better than other individuals. They are better than a person of color. They are better than a black person. So this is all a psychological strategy and trick used by many governments to take a group that's not as oppressed, so us, the MENA culture, and use them to aid in the oppression of a further oppressed group aka individuals in the black community so please please open your eyes and realize that you are being used and you're um you're being influenced and you're literally being cultivated you and your parents and we're all guilty of it to aid in systemic racism, to aid in the continuous oppression, to aid in sustainable, keyword sustainable racism. And the reason I say sustainable is because if it wasn't sustainable, it would not have lasted up until 2020. It would not have lasted up until right now. I will never claim that I never had prejudice. I was cultivated in a house. I was cultivated in a culture that looked down upon other people, that looked at a skin tone that looked at a dress or that looked at the style of dressing that looked at a religion and decided bam i made my mind up these people are not as good as us so it's it's okay to have that history but it's not okay to stay in it it is important and it is your personal duty just like it is mine to to draw attention to these things when you do it if you are walking down the street and it's dark at night and you automatically get scared because some guy is walking by, take notice. Did you get scared because that guy was suspicious or did you get scared because of something that guy was wearing or a skin color he had on that led you to assume fear due to a mentality that was embedded in you? Once you take notice of these things, you start making changes. And once you actively make changes, you break down this implicit and explicit racism and bias in these opinions that have been cultivated in you. So please start taking action. Even if you feel like you haven't been active in the movement, you don't need to go out and protest if you don't feel comfortable. But the one thing you need to do is you need to work on yourself and you need to break down these thoughts and these idolations and these concepts that you have been infused with since birth it is your duty to start with you and it is your duty to make sure that you as an individual are treating every single person equal regardless of their race their color their religion their gender their sexuality it doesn't matter i don't care if you're religious i don't care if you are not whatever you believe in we all came from the same thing we are all 
one human race and that's really the bottom of it and that's what should matter so i'm gonna step off my soapbox and i'm gonna share the videos and the opinions of those who are directly impacted and i'm super thankful to have friends like this and to have friends who are forward and able to have these conversations so please i know i talk a lot but it is time for us to just shut up and listen listen to the black community listen to what they have to say and understand their anger and do what they need us to do our time to speak is done it is our time to shut up and listen so let's get listening hi everyone my name is gizman and i would first off like to say thank you to sandra for giving black people this platform to express themselves during this time um i want to really talk about activism and how it works with the black lives matter movement because for me it's really upsetting to see that it took until 2020 and george floyd's murder for people to see that police brutality exists because Black people have known this is our everyday. We have, from a young age, p um, black parents are telling their children, um, don't don't play your music too loud. Don't wear a do rag if you go out. Don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, so the cops don't think you're a threat, so the cops don't murder you. So it really hurts to see that it took the world to see George Floyd's death to see that police brutality is affecting the black community. But um, although all, all the activism is great, although everyone is reposting, do, signing petitions now, it's really important for you as an ally to continue this even after the trend of Black Lives Matter ends, you know? After people are still posting, on, are done posting on social media, after the news keep, stops reporting on it, I really urge all of you to keep educating your families, keep educating your communities, read books, learn more about this movement, and how we need to work together to end systematic racism and, and police brutality because it's 2020, it shouldn't be happening. Uh, black people have been negatively affected for over 400 years and I really hope that this, that all of this is causing some type of change to occur. Thank you. Hello, my name is Matheus, I am a friend of Sanders and also a black man in Brazil. You have to deal with your president and a lot of Congress men and women that are also racist and also believe in white supremacy. Well, we do as well. Our president actually, Jair Bolsonaro, likes your president a lot. He actually follows a lot of footsteps from your president and he is also a white, white supremacist, neo-Nazi, fascist, racist, racist, and misogynist man. So our countries had to do with slavery. Now we have to do with this type of presidents. And we also have to deal with the genocide of our brothers and sisters. And do not mistake by this. Just because they are being arrested, it does not mean they do not believe it's legitimate. They do think that killing us is legitimate, that the power they have, it's a white flag to do it. It's a green sign actually, sorry, white flag is a Brazilian expression. So it's a green light to do it. So I'm calling my brothers and sisters to say, you are not alone. We are watching you, we are listening to you, we are talking to you, and we are also doing our part here we do see your riots we are inspired by them we are reposting them we are with you so i want to say this to white people in the united states that might be listening to this we want to believe that you are with us as well but do not be mistaken i don't think we cannot we can trust you fulfillingly not 100 percent because you have the face of the ones that put us in jail, the murderers, that strangle us, that take our breath and air of our lungs away. Such as George Floyd, actually in the same week as George Floyd was murdered by police, we have a case in Brazil from João Pedro. He was a boy of 14 years old, a black boy living in a black community in Brazil. He was poor and he was shot by the police. He was shot, he was dragged, he was hidden by the police. His family didn't know his whereabouts or what happened. The next day, he was shown up dead in a police facility. 
That's just one example, but every day I could give you one. Of a black teenager living in a favela, a poor community, being murdered, dragged, hidden by the police. We need to go after living with the liberty of going everywhere, with the liberty of not feeling fearful for our lives, our children's lives, our fathers, our mothers, sisters and brothers, friends. We have this right. And if they believe we do not, we are going to fight and show them. This is a call to action to all black men and women that are hearing this. And this is a call to action to every white people, non-black people hearing this. Let's do this together. Together we stand. Hello. So, um, what I want to touch on is mostly um, how racism affects people who are not just black, but also from like other countries. Like, I'm from Africa, and so when I first came here, um, I came to study, of course. But it's just funny how people just assume that you're less than or you're not as intelligent as they are just because you're black, you have an accent and especially women on top of that so it's really like challenging i want people to understand that my skin color my accent and me being a woman doesn't mean that i am less than doesn't define my intelligence or doesn't define my level of understanding a certain point sometimes it affects it because learning you know or studying in a different language completely can affect you as a person and it also affects um, maybe sometimes your level of, of understanding of certain things, but not always because you put twice as much work as what other people have to do. So it doesn't mean that you're not as intelligent or you're not smart or you're not, I don't know, you can't express yourself. No, you can. There's so many things that we can do and we even have more. I want people to understand that we have something that honestly they should wish they had. Equality amongst ourselves and others is something we all truly seek for, never really end up either showing or receiving based on our moods or situations at the time. Um, I mean, we all have different circumstances or different things we go through and we never really do what we want to do or we try and be sincere to others but because we are a bit angry or a bit thrown to the side it does and it doesn't suit us so we don't end up being kind to others and with George Floyd's death and then also everything else that has been going on for years now to separate us as a people either based on race financial stability or other reasons and that then leading to people getting hurt in the process we should learn from these things change our mindsets so we start treating everyone fairly it's a basic human right to be treated equally we need to be more considerate of others and love everyone for whoever they are, regardless. Just like we would want others to love us. Alright, guys, I know that was a lot. And sometimes these are not conversations we want to have. Sometimes these are conversations that we're having with families, that we're having with close ones, we're having with loved ones, and we're having in workplaces, in places of high sensitivity that we don't want to be having but if it's uncomfortable it means it needs to be had please start doing these conversations have these conversations have the guts to speak up because if you don't then the next person will also not speak up it's the bystander effect we all need to start speaking up do what you can Donate, read, educate yourself. You don't have to go out and protest again if you don't feel comfortable. Please educate yourself. Please educate those around you. Let's bring up a new generation where racism is, is history. It's truly history rather than a current present. 
where nobody has to fear walking out of their door. Nobody has to fear going on a run. Nobody has to fear sleeping and having the cops break in and killing them because their skin color was deemed dangerous, because her hijab was deemed scary, because his beard made you uncomfortable. This is not the world we should be. This is not the world we need to be living in. So please wake up and realize that the Black Lives Matter movement does concern you and it does attain to you. Doesn't matter if you're white, you're colored, you're black, you're whatever. It does relate to you. You need to take part of making this world a better place and it starts with you. I really, really do hope we never go back to the normal and we create a new normal. And it starts with us and it starts today and it starts right now. So please take action. Please get the help, help you need. Please stay safe if you are protesting. And please, please, please be sure you're checking in on each other. Be sure you are reaching out if you need help. Um, be sure you're talking, be sure you're communicating and have those conversations. Black Lives Matter and stay strong.